Music can make a disabled man walk, can make a dormant brain come back to life. Actually, sorry, that was the end of the talk. So let me start all over again. It's a summer day, hot, humid, in Charleston, South Carolina, three o'clock on a Saturday afternoon. The air condition breaks at home. My wife says, we're not staying here. I said, honey, it's kind of too early for dinner, really late for lunch. But it's festival time in Charleston, South Carolina, so look at the newspaper. I need to find a show in an air-conditioned place that will be cheap, content, who cares? But look at the newspaper, perfect. Find something nearby, small room, air-conditioned, five bucks the ticket. My place to go. Walk in, and there was Norbert. Norbert is the chef che cellist of the Charleston Symphony Orchestra. And he's playing something quite unique. He recorded himself playing different types of cellos. And he is playing solo against his own recordings. The recordings don't forgive, and he had no director to give him the pace, but he does it perfectly. So when we finish, me being me, go to him and I said, Norbert, I really would like to know what's going on in your brain. Norbert looks at me and said, well, my mother would be surprised if I have one. And I said, I'm a psychiatrist. I can deal with your mother. But I really want to know what's going on in your brain. He said, well, okay, call me, call me, whatever. Call, call me Monday. Okay, Monday I call, no answer. Tuesday, no answer. Wednesday, no answer. Thursday, no answer. Friday, he answered, hello, hi, that's Jacob Minzer. Who? The short guy, bald, funny accent that assaulted you during your concert. Oh, yeah, kind of remember you. I said, Norbert, I really want to know what's going on in your brain. Norbert looks at me and said, I'm sorry, man. I, I really cannot do it. I'm leaving in two weeks to Pittsburgh. I said, Pittsburgh? Perfect. That's exactly where I want you. And there he was, two weeks later, with about a hundred electrodes in his brain. And then, if it was not enough, we put him, put him inside this machine that looks like an old hairdresser. It's called magnetic encephalography. And we record about a thousand pieces of data every second in each one of these electrodes to learn how his brain produces music. Now, imagine Norbert. Here he is about to play his cello. He is relaxing. His brain is blue. There is no activity. But in a second, everything is going to change. His brain is going to explode with color and activity that will generate this music that we will enjoy. But that's not enough. The music is going to get hot. The rhythm is going to take a different pace. And now his brain would have to be the pacemaker that would generate the music. Let's see how his brain works as a pacemaker. generated the music, his brain was able to work as a pacemaker for the music that we enjoy. Well, it sounds okay, but can we do the reverse? Can we get music to become the pacemaker of a brain? What if a brain was not able to establish his own pace? Let me introduce Anisea Gunlock and Larry. Anisea is a music therapist, rehabilitation person, and Larry suffers from a terrible disease that is generated because his brain lost the ability to keep the pace, help his pace, so help, help the rhythm so he can walk. Larry suffers from Parkinson's disease. Let me show 
how Anisea tries to help him in his struggle to walk. Can we change that? Can music become the pacemakers of Larry's brain, allowing him to walk as he used to? That's Larry. But can we do it with somebody else? Can we get a dormant brain to wake up to life? I play doctor in the VA every Friday morning. That's my happy place. It's the dementia clinic, but about three months ago, I knew it was going to be a difficult day. I knew who was coming. The gentleman is well into my office. He has no expression. He doesn't interact. He doesn't talk. No movement. With him, the wife, the child, the grandchild, the great-grandchild, the mood is somber. The wife is about to ask me one of the questions that I really regret to hear. She said, Doctor, is there a soul in that body that used to be my husband? What to answer? I said, let's try something. What was his favorite song? She said, he always did it his way. <laughs> I take my phone. I put headphones around him. And as Frank Sinatra sings, the gentleman smiles. He starts to move. Look at his wife in the face and does like this, as inviting her to dance. She looks at me back and said, doctor, I got my answer. But those are two cases, two stories, two diseases, but there are thousands of cases, thousands of stories, and thousands of diseases. You know them. They are your friends, your neighbors, the people next to you. They suffer from Parkinson, Alzheimer's disease, strokes. I challenge you today to talk with the doctors, the therapists, take advantage of the music, become everyday scientists. Get a phone, get the headphones, put it around them, and let's together discover the healing power of music. Thank you so much. <laughs>